Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to securely send messages via email that are encrypted in such a way that only the intended recipient of that email will ever be able to receive and decode the messages. If you want to send an email, it's no different than sending a letter. You don't write letters on a postcard because everyone along the way can read what you wrote. So just because you may not have anything important or crucial to say via email, you may want to exercise your right to make it private so that nobody else can snoop on it, which is especially true if it's something important. So. If you look in the description for this video, you'll find the first link goes to gpg4win.org. So go there and you'll see this button here, download gpg4win. Click that. And then what you want is the first one in the list, which is the full release version, not like the light version or anything else. You want this first one. So click this. And I'll download this to the desktop. <coughs> okay. So now we have the. So double click on this. Hit yes. Okay. Next. Next. And what we want to do is we want to tick GPA and untick GPGOL because this is for Outlook and th this isn't going to be covered in this tutorial. This is an easy tutorial. So hit next, next, and hit the desktop shortcuts because it'll make it easier. Hit next, and then hit install. Now this will take a minute. Um, it's very quick, but I'm going to flip on the video to where it's completed. Okay, now that's completed, so we hit next and untick this because we don't want to see the README and hit finish. So now we have two programs here. I'm going to be covering this one in this tutorial, GPA. So double click this and if this is the first time you've run it, you'll see this screen that wants you to set up an ID, um, a key but I'm going to show you the proper way of doing it. So hit do it later, then go to edit preferences and make sure use advanced mode is ticked and then hit OK. Now we need to make ourselves a key to use for the encryption. Everyone who wants to use the encryption will have to make their own key for themselves. So we go to keys hit new key and put this on DSA not the one that says sign only but the one that just says DSA and then for the key size put this on 3072 or whatever the biggest number is available at the time that you do this then put your name in and for this example I'm going to pick Alice last name in their typical encryption style with the Alice and Bob. And we're going to go with for the email Alice at morethought.com. And then once we've typed in the name and the email, we'll hit OK. Now we've got to pick a passphrase. This should be around 20 digits or 20 characters or more that should have uppercase and lowercase letters, that is big and small letters, uh, and a symbol at least, and maybe some numbers, but something that's easily rememberable, but something that's not going to be guessable. You can change the password at any time, so if you want to, you could use something simpler just to get yourself up and running, and then change it down the line once you are fully confident with how this works, because this is easy. You just have to know how to use it. So 
just follow along with the tutorial. I'm going to type in a passphrase here, which is just very simple for demonstration purposes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now this is going to go through a whole process of generating the key. Depending on what your what speed your computer is, this may take up to a few minutes or it may just take a few seconds. So you just have to wait and when it's done, there we go. Now we have a key. So now what we need to do is we need to make a backup of this so that we always have it. So right click your key and you'll know this is your key because it's got a gold icon. Right click it, go to backup and then save the file and then it says it's done. So now you should stash this away somewhere and if you ever format your computer or you need to you buy a new computer or something you'll have the file to be able to put back in here you'll be able to import it and you'll be up and running again. So now we've created a key. This is a private key which only you have and a public key which you give to anybody and everybody. So what we need to do is we need to make a copy of the public key which we can then email to people. So if you right click your key, go to export keys and then click a folder you want it to go to, click up the top here and give it a name. I'm going to call this Alice's public key and hit save and it tells you that's been exported correctly and then just to make sure everything's all proper we'll hit file quit and then double click on GPA again to load it from fresh so now we have Alice's public key now what you need to do is you email this to people as an attachment so that they have it available and when they download your public key, I'm going to show you what you need to do. So we'll close this. So this is the Alice's email, and Bob has sent Alice an email. So Bob is the other guy, and Alice is us. So what we need to do is download Bob's public key. We'll save that onto the desktop. So now we have it. So what we need to do then is hit import, and this is what the other person will do when they get your public key. You press import, which is there, and then you find the file. So I go to desktop, oh, Bob, Bob's public key. So click that and then hit open. And we can see here that a public key was read and it was imported. So now we can see here we have two keys, the gold one is the one that has the public and private key, which is ours, which is why it's a nice gold color. And this bluey silvery looking one is a public key from somebody else. So now what we need to do is we need to get in contact with Bob somehow via uh, a phone or Skype or TeamSpeak or some other kind of system where we can actively talk, maybe face to face if you're able to do that and you need to verify once you click Bob's key here that the fingerprint is the same as the one that Bob actually made so Bob would read off his fingerprint like if I wanted to read off the Alice one I'd click Alice and then tell Bob 695E E7 read out the whole thing so you click on Bob and he tells you his fingerprint and you check it and if it's secure it's the right fingerprint it matches with the one you have then you right click his key and then you go to sign keys and you don't want to sign this locally because what we're going to do is we're going to sign this since we know for sure now that this is really Bob's key anyone who downloads his key which has trusted our key will also be able to trust it depending on how much trust they gave our key 
sounds a little bit complicated, but all you need to do is just sign the key, but not locally. So we'll leave this unticked, hit yes, and then we type in our password, hit OK. So now we've signed it. So that says that to anyone else who has the public key, um, which is unlikely because what you'd need to do is you'd need to right click his key export it just as you did your own and then give that back to Bob and then he could import it and then give that to other people so whenever he gives his public key to people it will also have your signature that says you signed it you approve this is the real person so anyone who you've already been communicating with when they get that key they will know, ah, Alice is already certified, this is the real deal. So, now we have this, we need to just set a little thing on here that says we trust it. So we signed it, now we need to do that. So right click, go to set owner trust, and here we have different levels of trust we place in the fact that this is really Bob, last names, public key. So I'm going to put full trust on here. You could put ultimate, and that's even higher. You can read through that, but I'm going to go on full for now. Okay, so now, whenever Bob sends us a message that's encrypted to us, and he signs it, we will be able to verify that it really came from Bob. So if we want to send a message now to Bob, what we need to do is you load up GPA, so you double click GPA, you hit clipboard, and then you start typing the message that you want to securely send. This is important. Never ever start typing your email in an email website or a client because it will probably be saving every word you type. For example, right now, if I was to start typing, it will save it as a draft on the server. So an unencrypted version of what I've typed is now available as a draft. So this is bad. We don't want to do that. So always type the email that you want to send securely, the message in this box, into the clipboard box. So I'm going to send Bob this message and then we hit encrypt because we want to encrypt this encrypting is to make it secure and decrypting or verifying is to pull the real information out of it again so we hit encrypt so now we choose who we want to encrypt this to so I want to encrypt this to Bob you could encrypt it to multiple people by holding the control key on your keyboard and clicking as many names as you need. But we'll just send this to Bob. Now, if you want to just send it as an encrypted message, that's fine. He will get it and only he will be able to decode it. But if you want to digitally sign it so that he knows with absolute certainty that it came from you personally, because he's added your public key and signed it and trusted it then you hit the sign button and select your key which this is a good idea to do anyway so we'll do that and then hit OK and since we've typed our password within the past five or ten minutes we don't need to type it again otherwise you would see that box show up and you would just type in your password and it would do it so this is the encrypted blob of text that you need to send to this person. Now instead of pasting this as an email body, we're going to save it as a file and send it as an attachment. So right click in here, hit select all, right click and hit copy. Then we're going to load up notepad then right click here and hit paste so this is the actual message that's been encrypted so now we need to save this
Okay, so now we have my encrypted message to Bob. So now what we do, we'll close that off, close that off, is what we do is we send an email to Bob. And we add an attachment and we find that message that we just did, my encrypted message to Bob, and we add it as an attachment. So therefore, this attachment will absolutely be untouched. Nothing will have modified it in any way. No formatting, fonts, margins, whatever. So we send that. And now Bob has that. Now I'm going to flip onto the Bob account and send a message so that I can show you how you decode a message when you receive it. So one moment. Okay, so here we are. Bob has sent a message here, but is attached to encrypted messages. We have one here that's encrypted and signed, and one here which is encrypted but not signed. So let's download these. Okay. <clears throat> so what we do now is Let's open up the encrypted but not signed one. Okay, now what we need to do is copy just the actual part that we need. So we'll copy from here, we'll drag to the end here. Right click in here, hit copy. Then we'll come here and click on clipboard. We'll right click in here and hit paste and then hit verify. Now we need to type in our password. <coughs> okay. Now in this case, this has not been signed because it was encrypted but not signed. So there's nothing in this box because it wasn't signed. So we click close and here's the encrypted message that he sent. Okay. So that's fine. Let's open up the other one that was encrypted and signed and we'll copy this remember select just the part we need right click copy and we can close that go to clipboard right click in here paste and then hit verify and because we just typed our password we don't need to type it again and as we can see here because we've already verified and signed his certificate his uh, public key, it's in green, valid, good signature by Bob last name. So this means that this message is authentic. It was actually sent by Bob and not an imposter. It hasn't been modified since he sent it. So this is how you can securely communicate to people by just sharing your public key and then just using this clipboard feature to type a message, encrypt it, maybe sign it as well, and send it as an attachment. If you found this video useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And in another video, I'm going to show you an easier and better way to share your public key with other people in a way that they can find it without you having to give it to them and they know that it really matches up with your email address and not someone who's pretending to be you. So watch out for that video. That'll be coming up soon. And I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.